But um, I was I was angry, and I was hurt, sad. I was. I said, my God, what you know? Of all people, he should just why didn't why did you let him die? It should have been me. I was glad to give my life for him. You know, I I couldn't understand why he was because I was driving. Why did he have to die? You know. So I was <clears throat> totally consumed with this guilt and, and shame and uh, all I wanted to do was to tell my best friend that I was sorry and he, you know, I didn't mean to kill him. Um, but the only way to do that that I thought was, uh, well, I'm going to have to kill myself. There's no, there's no way to get to him because he's up there. So if I kill myself, then I'll be able to tell him, hey, Sorry about that. Uh, I didn't mean to. So I couldn't get this. Uh, this couldn't. I couldn't get this out of my mind. I just had to. So I just. I planned out to take a bottle of uh, painkillers. I had plenty of painkillers there. I wasn't. You know, they gave sent me home with them. I didn't really need them. Just I had them there. So I just decided. Uh, you know what? That's it. I can't. I can't deal with this. I was 19 years old, by the way. 19. And he was 19, we were both 19, 19 years old. And that was it. I decided, okay, I'm going to do it. I got to go, I got to go find him. I got to tell him I'm sorry. So I planned out I was going to take these bottle of pills, and that was it. And uh, before I was about to do it, I had this like vision of my, one of my youngest, my younger sisters, it's April. Um, I had a vision that she would, she came down to the, because I had my, my bedroom was downstairs, she came down like she always did, she knocked on my door, hey Jaren, dinner's ready, but this time I didn't answer the door, or I didn't answer her, so she, she came in and she found me dead, so I said, oh man, can't do that to my little sister, mm. so now I was like, man, if I just didn't have a family, I could just kill myself and get it over with. Because I can't deal with this. So, um, so I just became very just. I had a just huge chip on my shoulder from anyone and everyone, especially God. I didn't. I didn't want to. Don't even tell me about God. I don't want to. It's no. So, um, my other best friend, he's. He finished up college, what he was doing, and uh, he graduated. And he was moving to Hollywood, California. So he said, hey, Jaron, you, know, you want to move to Hollywood? <laughs> you don't have to ask me twice, let's go. Because I wanted to get away from there. I wanted to, I thought I could run from my problems and just go out there, you know. Because we were, I grew up in, I was, I'm born in California, but I Parents moved to New Mexico, so I went through all my school in New Mexico. And that's where I met Devin and Brian. So and when Devin graduated college, he went to, to, went to go to Hollywood to become a recording engineer, which he did. So he invited me there. I went, moved to Hollywood, California, and, uh, and the party <laughs> kept going. And we're talking Hollywood style now. And uh, it was just escalated, just, uh, and I didn't, I didn't drink just to, I, I didn't like the, the taste of alcohol, really, I really didn't like the taste of it. I just drank to get obliterated, because I wanted to leave my problem, get away from my problems. I wanted to, because that pain was always there, that guilt was always there. It just followed me, it was with me everywhere I went. If I'm driving, I, if every time I made a left turn, I would think of the accident. Every, every time I heard the name Brian, I would even see, see the accident. So it was, it was haunting me, and, and I was, um, basically, I was looking for a way to die without killing myself, because then I, that way no one could say, oh, he killed himself. If it was a natural thing or another accident, I was hoping to get killed in a car accident, and then, go the way he went, that's what I was hoping. And even when I was, uh, 
on the airplane to, to go to California. I didn't, I didn't put my seatbelt on in the airplane. I refused to put my seatbelt on. I was hoping, hey, you know, <laughs> not that you're really going to survive a plane crash if your seatbelt's not on, but I don't know uh, you know, what I was thinking. But when I got off the plane, <laughs> the police were, were waiting for me to ask me why I want to put my seatbelt on. I guess that's some sort of federal law. Or something. Yeah, it's a lot. Put your seatbelt on the airplane. Um, but I just, I didn't care. I just wanted to die. Somehow, some way, I wanted to die. So I just continued the partying scene. And, um, you know, but every, every morning when I would wake up after the night of partying and being, you know, carousing around, I still had the same pain. And um, it, it never, it wouldn't leave it, no matter how drunk I got, no matter, it was always there. And, um, and so now I'm, now I'm trying to find a way for happiness or find a way to, to eliminate this pain that I was feeling, this guilt and shame and all this. I was trying to do it on my own because I already put God on the shelf because I, I said to God, God, I'll see you later. I spoke that out of my mouth. I said, God, I know you, I believe you, but I gotta go. I'll see you later. <clears throat> so now at this point, I thought I was a hypocrite now and told God where to go. He's, and God's never going to take me back now, so there's really no use trying because, because you know, you always tell, well, a hypocrite is a bad thing, so I just consider myself a hypocrite and God would never take me back. So it was just pedal to the metal. And so, well, I was uh, trying to find a way. How am I going to relieve this pain? How am I going to get, you know, get happy again? And so when I would come home for Christmas or the holidays, I'm from a big family, and I would see, you know, my sisters married, you know, my my brothers married, and you know they seem to have a life. You know, my my parents are married. You know, they have a, have a life, and it seems like they're happy. So I got this bright idea in my head. You know, maybe if I, maybe if I got married, you know, I, I could be happy. I'd like to try that. So. So I thought, well, I guess it's worth a shot. So I went, I went to my favorite bar in off of Hollywood Boulevard. <clears throat> and the first, you know, first cute girl that walked in, I said, look, uh, yeah. I can marry her. <laughs> hey, why not? She'll, she'll do. So a month later, I'm living with her, and a year later, we're married. She said black, I said white, he said hi, I said low. It was, it was, uh, it was the fight from the beginning. <clears throat> so this was, this wasn't making me happy. And so this went on for a few years and um, so now 